you have become the landlord of a house that doesn't belong to you. No, you are happy. You should never be. No, not for that kind of life. I'm the first person I came to this street 18 years ago. When I started, when I entered here, they hadn't even tied it. Okay, now you're welcome. They should name the street after you. This world is big, brother. See, that's why I love the words of Caleb. He said, let's go up at once. Let's take the land. So now, therefore, give me this mountain. Make progress. Don't remain there year after year, year after year, year after year. Until they start describing your house with that curtain. The children that were like this, they are now like this. They know that house with that front curtain. Say, not me. Hallelujah. There's a time for everything. I believe in change. Change is growth. Not change for change's sake. And then you change and things are going bad. No, change, but upward. Progress. That's what I like. Move, glory to God. You just keep moving. You just keep moving. In your life. Upgrade your life and upgrade the lives of others. I mean, if you've been staying there, after some time you say, ah, I think my cousins, all your cousins have come there. They have now entered the house. They are growing up with you. Say, all of you, you take this house. I'm moving to another one. They say, hey, how? how? Say, by the faith of God. Give them this one. Move to another one. Instead of getting angry with them, say, now, there were, there were only five or four here when you all came. Three years ago, five, more of you have entered. Now we are 18 of us inside this house. I'm tired. You push, you go. I'm tired. Everybody leave me alone. I'm tired. Don't complain of them. Complain of yourself. Ask yourself, since you brought in new people, why are you not accepting progress? Say, I accept progress. I have received them and I am moving forward. That is it. we understand that the aeons were framed by the word of God by the rhema of God you get into your room release the rhema start framing your aeon frame your aeon frame it in your room right there frame your aeon and do you know you've been framing your aeon you see, don't talk defeat. Don't talk failure. Don't talk defeat. Don't talk failure. Every day you're like this. Now your face, nobody recognizes you. What's the problem? What is the problem? <laughs> All the worry signs have become permanent. <laughs> what are you thinking about? <laughs> In your mind, you are saying, Do you know I'm almost 50? I'm 46. I'm not married. <laughs> That's what's troubling you. Every day. I'm 46. I'm not married. Then you look at yourself in the mirror. You're trying to make yourself look younger and it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so your life has now, is now controlled by this thing that you're looking for. 
Don't you know that someone that is not married at my age, someone that is not married, he's a taboo in our place. He's a taboo. Taboo. He's a taboo. It's a taboo. Someone, someone is not married, is always not married, they will say, who are they? They will say. They will say. You don't understand. Be a peace setter in life. Are you hearing me? Be a peace setter. Be a history maker. They will say. They Decide what they are supposed to say. All what you could have done in your life is now in a bucket because you are thinking of what someone else might say. All the people you could have helped, you can't help them because you are always spending the time thinking about yourself. You used to be fine. Now, because of your worry, you no longer look fine. Now you're overeating and you're out of shape. <laughs> and now, how can somebody... Nobody's coming. If you like, claim him into your aeon. <laughs> That's not going to work because you're not supposed to claim another person. That one has a right over his own aeon. Every day, that's all about your prayer. Once your knees hit the floor, Father, you remember my matter. The angels are away. Say so he's coming again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're set for something, right? Success only. How many of you believe in success only? Hallelujah. I believe in absolute success. Now, you know, human experience says you win a few, you lose a few. Sometimes up and sometimes down. They say, let's be realistic. And what they mean by being realistic is to follow the pattern in the world follow the pattern of things in the world this is what my grandfather met this is what my father met this is what i've met and this is what my children will meet is that what your life is the bible says follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises Considering the end of that conversation, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. See that? You don't follow, you know, you don't follow the voice of failure. You don't follow the voice of failure. What mark are you going to make in the world? Because you came. What's going to happen because you came? What changes will be experienced because you came? Don't pass through this world for nothing. You hear me? Remember years ago, while studying, reading the scriptures, I was writing some things in my small diary. I wrote, I was born as an answer to the cry of millions. You know what it means to say that and to mean it that's the way i want you to think you talk like that you think like that never think like 
someone who needs anything jesus had no sense of need he had no sense of lack he had no sense of need cultivate that mentality come to that point in your life how do you get there through the word of god through your understanding see because the bible says the world is yours as a scripture the world is yours so what else what, what, what do you want if the world is yours they say yes yes that uh, that's a side i understand that but oh father so, so then what what are you asking for instead of saying oh lord i need so so so, so amount of, i need so, so, so amount. say father i got all the money i need in the name of jesus because he said my god shall supply L listen did you notice it, did you notice paul didn't say my god shall supply all my needs he didn't say my god shall supply all our needs he said my god shall supply all your need about himself he said i have learned in whatsoever state i am to be independent of circumstances independent of circumstances he wasn't saying oh god supply all my need have a new thinking everything i ever require is available to me say it with me come on now we're not making that up that scripture the bible says that he has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge hallelujah all things that pertain to life and godliness he's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness so have a great life an exceptional life come on no, i'm a winner every day yeah i'm a winner every day every day you know i say father that's in, in my prayer father i thank you all my adversaries are paralyzed all my adversaries and enemies around about me are paralyzed and my head is lifted above them all that's what i say because that's what i found out i found out i found out the bible says when my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell they stumbled and fell that is what is written concerning them they are history they stumbled and fell so once the man declares himself to be an adversary his future was written long ago he has to fulfill the rest of it to stumble and what fall they stumbled and they stumbled everything was all right until it's... they stumbled and fell <laughs> glory to god but for me the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid? Then you move from there to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Glory to God. I shall not want. That means I can't have any luck. I shall not want. You know, imagine when you walk into your home and say, we are blessed in this house. Woo, glory to God. We are blessed in this house. We are blessed in this house. That's what you say to your children. That's what you say to your spouse. We are blessed in this house. My daughter will say there are two richest people in the world, God and Daddy. 
and she's right no but you know a lot of people grew up when they were told we're average family they even told them to write essays in school average family and you wrote a average family because the teacher will not allow you to say anything about that you're average average who me average no we are we're average average and you call yourself born again average you don't know who you are average 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 when you are royalty average so you allow the circumstances of life outside to dictate how you live average eh? We'll, we'll come in later on in the year we'll come to another level I, i'll talk to you about what to do with your environment all right there's something you can do with your environment yeah something you can do with your environment no you are the king's kid you're not an ordinary person that's why you get excited about your job no matter where you work Get excited about your job because whatever job you do is an opportunity to be a blessing to the world. It will not measure your prosperity. That's what people don't understand about us. Look, contribute through your work, through your job. Be excited. Be that one guy, that one fellow that's excited about his job when others are complaining you are excited always do more than you are paid for did you hear what i said be excited to do more than you are paid for always be more than what they think you're worth prove yourself to always be better than their value of you by outdoing their expectations it's important because you're a child of God. That's what you do. That's the mark of a child of God. Where you work becomes blessed because of you. Not just because you're praying, but because the work you do is excellent. Become the example. Don't come late to work. Others are coming early. You, you, you are strolling at 9.30. Where did you go to? I went to the bank. Why didn't you go to the bank at break time? Come to work early. No, you come late and you are the first to close. No, don't be like that. Don't be that kind of person. No, 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 no. Leaders are different. See, you are a leader. Jesus sent us to lead. He sent us to lead. You're a leader. So take responsibility. Be ahead. Be first to show up. They may call you names, but that will just be the beginning. Because they start calling you names when they notice that you're different. But if you continue, if you keep at it, soon enough, life will show that sowing and reaping are still a law of the spirit it won't be long before you become the beneficiary of the right principles are you listening it's important that's why i can understand you know a lot of people that say oh oh there's corruption in the country oh the, the leaders are corrupt and so on and so forth why would anybody steal from his country it's like destroying your own environment and hoping to get something out of it you're wrong you don't destroy your environment you don't destroy your country corruption is not is not uh, is not um, a problem against a government it is against a people it's a shame but because we don't realize it we almost even, almost even praise those 
who successfully run away with the money. Praise God. See, but if we show a difference, it won't belong. Before our thinking dominates the society. The Bible says, overcome evil with good. It says, be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Which means we can overcome evil. That's right. Evil will not prevail. It can only prevail when the good people do nothing. Say this, not, not while I'm in charge. Are you in charge? Yes. Are you in charge? Yes. Glory to God. Well, well, what was that scripture in verse 3, Hebrews chapter 11? Give it to me now. You didn't forget it, did you? That's what we